Now, what you are seeing is five, 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 six timers all wired up in the Atari Punk console schematic and they're all modulating each other via the uh, control voltage input on each chip. So that chip drives that chip, which drives that one, driving that one, driving that one, which then drives the audio transformer on the board going into that speaker there. Now, to control the Atari Punk console, I'm using three potentiometers there, one there. I'm using part of this joystick. Um, I'm also using a whole bunch of photo cells. Basically what you get is this. really easily add to this by adding all these, I could utilize all these switches, I could utilize that, I could use the photo cell there. There's a million things I could do to this, I just didn't, simply because this took long enough as it was. So, what it basically was, was I was going to start with an Atari Punk console, modify that to do some stuff, and then I kept adding and adding, and I'm like, well, let's fill up the entire board. So I did. This was more of the can it be done rather than should it be done, how will it turn out. So I'm not too fond of it. It needs a lot of work before you would actually solder it up on a piece of perf board and uh, put it in an enclosure. The fact that there's so many photo cells so close to each other, you can't really control them independently simply because if I shine the light there, it covers up two of them where, you know, if you angled it or something, it might change it, but still you're going to get light that's going to affect the one that's not intended for. It didn't all fit on one breadboard, so I have another one there wired into that speaker. Running off of nine volts, and the reason it's so crackly and everything is this is not a very stable power source. With all, the, all of them running together on the same power supply, um, really messes things up, and that adds to the whole glitchiness, sort of staticky notion of the whole thing here. But anyway, if you wanted to build a smaller version of this, I would recommend doing two of them, three of them, cutting out the last two because I think that's really when things started to get out of hand. You got a bunch of 556 five, timers, 555 five, five timers, wire them all up, and this is what you get. But anyway, Thank you for watching. I hope you build an Atari Punk console or something similar. Uh, link in the description to a couple of modification videos that I did showing you some full mods that I did to the Atari Punk console. Uh, made sort of different, took a different spin on the whole Atari Punk console thing there. So anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll have more videos in the future. So this was the five 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 six timer Atari Punk console concoction extravaganza. So, thank you for watching and I hope to see you back here in the very near future. These are the greatest wires for breadboarding right here. You can get them on Amazon. I got some from MPJA and they make this sort of thing a lot faster. They're very flexible. It's 26 gauge stranded wire in there and it's got a, you can't see that very well, but there's a pin there. And that goes into breadboards very well, making this sort of prototyping very quick and painless. And uh, when you're wiring up something like this, you definitely want to use them if you have them. Because this would have taken me hours to do if I was just using typical solid core wire. With this, it took an hour. And that included all the troubleshooting to get everything to work. I'll put a link to Amazon in the description where you can buy some. You can get the same ones I did. It's a pack of like 75 of them for something like six bucks. So definitely worth it if you do a lot of breadboard prototyping.
And I think I broke it.